Hello guys, welcome back to the course Inorganic Made Easy. So this is going to be a course which is going to make the study of inorganic chemistry very easy and therefore very scoring for all the students. So please do watch all the lectures we are putting up in this course so that you can excel in your examination. In the series today, we are going to put up a lecture tricks to calculate the bond order for more than 20 electrons till 20 electrons how we calculate the bond order this is given in our detailed discussion on the course chemical bonding and there we have also put up a short trick to very quickly find out the bond order till 20 electrons also so you can watch that for a better learning. Now, why is this bond order for more than 20 electrons important? Let me give you an example. We have a question. Arrange the following in decreasing order of thermal stability. ClO2 negative, O3 negative, 4 negative and ClO negative. So these are the four anions which you have to arrange in decreasing order of the thermal stability. One thing is understanding the concept which is going to give you the correct answer. Here I am going to answer this question with the help of the calculation of the bond order and therefore this is going to be very very easy for you even if you forget the concepts behind well bond order is going to give you the correct answer to this question and many such questions in the examination. Today we are going to learn four tricks to calculate the bond order for more than 20 electrons and trust me there is going to be at least one or two which you would have never seen before on YouTube also. So really very helpful lecture this is going to be for you people. So let us not waste our time and quickly start with the discussion. I am Dr. Ritu Johal, your educator from the channel H2O, the A to Z of chemistry. And I hope you're going to enjoy your learning with me. So how do we calculate the bond order for more than 20 electrons? I have trick number one. And trick number one, this says that bond order, this is equal to B by A. And what is B and what is A? Well, B is going to be the number of resonate bonds and A is going to be the number of resonating structures. So bond order, this becomes total number of resonate bonds and our total number of resonance structures. Now, what are resonate bonds? Let us understand this with the help of an example so that the concept this becomes very clear. So I take the example of the ozone molecule. So for calculation of the bond order, the first step is going to be drawing the Lewis structure for the ozone molecule and then drawing all the resonating structures because the formula says that you have to have the number of the resonating structures. So I hope you all know how to draw them. If you do not, again, my detailed course on chemical bonding, you can watch for a better learning. So this is going to be the structure for the ozone molecule and the two resonating structures that we have. So here, first of all, what is going to be B, which is the total number of resonate bonds. So what you have to do is you have to take any one bond pair. For example, if I take this one, I take this one in this resonating structure, I will be taking the same bond pair in the next resonating structure also. And in between this bond pair, how many number of bonds they are present, we will be finding out the total number. So here it is one and here it is two. So one plus two is going to be three. So total number of resonate bonds, this is going to be three and the number of resonating structure, this is two. So B is 3 and A is 2 and bond order is going to be 3 by 2 that is 1.5. So this is going to be the bond order in the ozone molecule. Neither this bond is a single bond, neither this is going to be a double bond. In fact, it is going to be a resonance hybrid of the two structures where both the bonds, they will be having a bond order of 1.5. So this is what the interpretation of bond order is going to give us an understanding. So let us take one more example, the carbonate ion. So again, you will be drawing the lowest structure and the resonating structures for that. So this is how they are going to look like. So I hope you all know how to do that. Now, again, 
first step is going to be finding out the number of resonate bonds. So just choose one of the bond pairs, this one, this one, or this one, any one which you like. For example, if I choose this one, right? So this is going to be two bonds, three bond, and four bond. Between the same bond pair, how many number of bonds they are present? This will give us the resonate bonds to be four and the number of resonating structures, they are three. So the bond order, this is going to be B, that is four and A is three. So B by A is going to be four by three. The answer is going to be 1.33. I think it is easy, not at all difficult. Let us look at the second trick now. So trick number two, again, this is bond order equal to B by A, but now B and A, they are going to be slightly different. So what is B? Well, B is the number of bonds around the central atom, whereas A is going to be the number of atoms about the central atom. Okay, so bond order will be equal to total number of bonds around the central atom over total number of atoms about the central atom. This means this is going to be one more step advantageous to you people to calculate the bond order because here you will not have to draw the resonating structures. You will simply have to draw the one lowest structure for the given species. Let us see again with the same two examples. So first example back again to ozone molecule. So here now you're just going to draw one structure, one lowest structure for the molecule. So this is what we draw. All right. So here now we have to first of all see B number of bonds around the central atom. So central atom is going to be this oxygen. You will see the number of bonds around it. So this is going to be one bond and these are two bonds. So one plus two is going to be three, right? So B will be three and A is number of atoms around the central atom. So this is one atom, this is two atom. So A is going to be two. Therefore bond order will be three by two, that is 1.5. Again, the bond order, this has come the same but the advantage that we did not have to draw any resonating structures this time. So this is more time saving. So let us again quickly do that for the carbonate ion also. So we have this to be the lowest structure for the carbonate ion, not the lowest structure, just with the bond representation. You can say that now here, the number of bonds about the central atom is going to be four and the number of atoms about the central atom, this is three. So four by three is going to give us the bond order as 1.33. Again, the value, this is coming up the same. You do not have to draw the resonating structures. Now we move on to trick number three. Now trick number three is going to be much more simpler here also. How well, bond order, this is going to be equal to one plus number of pi bonds over number of sigma bonds. So you do not have to calculate how many bonds, how many atoms. Well, you just see quickly, which you can draw, see in the structure, how many number of pi bonds are present, how many number of sigma bonds are present at to the ratio one, what you will be getting is the bond order. Let us again see quickly with the two examples that we have already seen. So first of all, we have the ozone molecules. So just quickly draw the structure. Here you can see that the number of pi bonds is going to be just one and the number of sigma bonds is two. So the bond order, this is going to be equal to one plus one by two, that is 1.5. Again, the value, this has come the same only, right? Only whichever trick you are liking, you can use that. Next we have is the carbonate ion. So for the carbonate ion, the pi bonds again is one and the sigma bonds, this is three. So one plus one by three is going to give you again the same value that is 1.33. Now I come up to trick number four and trick number four is going to be that trick probably which you must have never ever seen or learned. And this is going to be a very helpful trick to you people. How it is going to be? Helpful, let me show you. The bond order, this is equal to the valency of the peripheral atom plus the charge on the acid radical divided by the total number of peripheral atoms. 
it is seeming to be difficult to you people do not worry when i am going to show you the example you will find and realize that this is very very simple all right so the bond order this is equal to valency of the peripheral atom plus the charge on the acid radical divided by the total number of peripheral atoms therefore with one limitation the limitation is that this is an acid radical so you will be able to calculate the bond order only for the acid radicals and that also oxygen based acid radicals for example the one carbonate ion which we have already done we can do with this formula the advantage the big big advantage is that you will not have to draw the structure also here let me show you that with the help of the carbonate ion so we have the carbonate ion all right so i am not going to draw any structure i am not going to draw any resonating structures just simply i have written down carbonate ion so here we have carbon to be the central atom oxygen to be the peripheral atom oxygen you have to find out what is going to be the valency so valency is the combining capacity of any element and for oxygen it is going to be equal to 2 remember it is not minus 2 we are not talking about the oxidation state we are simply talking about the combining capacity and the combining capacity is never negative so combining capacity or valency of oxygen this is going to be equal to 2 the next thing you have to see is the charge on the acid radical so here the charge on the acid radical is minus 2 all right and then you have to see the total number of peripheral atoms the total number of peripheral atoms is going to be equal to 3 right so easy enough just looking at the formula you have written down these things and now just apply the formula bond order this is going to be equal to 2 plus minus 2 by 3 and the answer this is going to again come up as 1.33 so no structures no resonating structures wow you have just simply within a fraction of a second in fact found out the bond order of the carbonate ion so i hope you are clear with this so now let us go back to the question which we started the lecture with to find out the thermal stability of some ions so the question is how are we going to arrange the following in the decreasing order of thermal stability and as i told you we are going to attempt this question by finding out the bond order so first of all let us find out the bond order for all these ions as you can see all of these they are acid radicals and they are oxygen based acid radicals so we can apply trick number 4 very quickly to find out the bond order for all the four species so first we have clo4 negative so clo4 negative valency of oxygen is going to be equal to 2 the charge on the acid radical is going to be minus 1 the number of peripheral atoms that is number of peripheral oxygens is 4 so bond order is going to be 2 plus minus 1 by 4 this will come up as 1.75 all right now next we have is clo3 negative so here everything is going to remain the same only the number of peripheral atoms is changing so 2 plus minus 1 by 3 the answer is 1.66 clo2 negative 2 plus minus 1 by 2 1.50 clo negative 2 plus minus 1 by 1 this is equal to 1 so what time did you take to find out the bond order not a real 1 minute also just within half a minute or even less than that you found out the bond order for all these four ions using a very short short trick now how is this going to be helpful to us let me show you that so now that we have calculated the bond order what we did is we just arranged them in either an increasing or decreasing order of the bond order values so here we have clo4 negative to be having the maximum bond order that is 1.75 then 1.66 and then 1.5 and 
So this is how we arrange them either in a decreasing or increasing order. That would be your choice. Now, how is this bond order calculation helpful to us? If you remember your lectures on bond order, you would realize that bond order, this is inversely proportional to bond length. Right, bond order. This gives us the number of bonds between two atoms. More is the number of bonds. Shorter is the bond length because the two atoms they come closer to one another with more number of bonds. So we have ClO4 negative. Uh, in this, the ClO bond this to be of the shortest bond length. Then ClO3 negative and ClO negative will be having the longest ClO bond. Now, when the bond length is more, it can be broken very easily. Okay, so what this means is that the bond strength will be less when the bond order is going to be less. So bond order, this is going to be directly proportional to bond strength. More is the bond order, more is the bond strength. So we have ClO4 negative, the ClO bond to be the strongest and the ClO bond in ClO negative to be the weakest. Now, when bond strength is more, obviously it is going to be more energy required to break the bond. So bond energy is also going to be more. So again, you can say that bond order, this is going to be directly proportional to bond energy also, right? And when bond energy is more, you have to take more energy, supply more energy to break the bond between the chlorine and the oxygen atom in ClO4 negative. This means a lot of heat is going to be required to break the bond and therefore we can say that the thermal stability will also be more. And this is how you're going to answer the question which was asked to you at the start of the lecture. You had to arrange all of these four ions in the order of their thermal stability and because bond order is more, so bond strength is more, bond energy is more, thermal stability is also more. So ClO4 negative, the ClO bond, this is going to be more thermally stable, right? So I hope this is clear. One more thing which you can remember here is that bond order, this is inversely proportional to reactivity also. Why? Because when it is going to take more heat to break the bond, obviously that means that this is quite stable. And when it is stable, it is not going to react. So the chemical reactivity is going to be inversely proportional to bond order. And for these anions, what is generally asked is what is the order of their oxidation power? So oxidation is also going to be a type of chemical reaction, right? So oxidation reductions, reactions, they are chemical reactions. So when the chemical reactivity is going to be less for ClO4 negative, so obviously this means that its oxidizing power is also going to be less. So ClO negative, this will be having the maximum oxidizing power or maximum chemical reactivity, but this is going to be thermally least stable. That is why it is reacting more because this thermally least stable. Okay, so I hope you are understanding. One more thing which is asked is going to be the acidic character and that you can remember the thermal stability order and the acidic character for these are going to be just the same. So bond order, this is going to help you predict so many things and how we calculate the bond order, I have already taught you that in very easy four tricks. So here we have given now a list of a few species for which you can calculate the bond order and check your answers also. When you're going to draw the structures for these, you can also see that the structures are already given. So you can even check your structure drawing also here. So I hope you're going to benefit from this discussion. So that would be the end for this discussion. We will be back with more tricks, more concepts and more questions. So please be with us to subscribe to the channel. If you've liked the lecture, do click it a thumbs up and do share it with your friends for a better learning for them also. So see you again. Have a nice day. God bless you.